Hi everyone and welcome to The Sandbrook Adventures! Well, we're back here at home after our first ever Disney cruise on board the beautiful Disney Dream. We had a great time, didn't we, Charlotte? We did. We have wanted to do a Disney cruise for so long, so to finally step on board was really exciting for us. Of course, if you haven't already, make sure you check out the five different vlogs that we filmed on board. And we had a brilliant experience, other than me getting ill with food poisoning. But you know what? Charlotte really stepped up and I was really proud of her because she did an amazing job with them vlogs. I enjoyed it so much and I appreciate each and every one of you's comments. It was so kind. It was the first time you've really done some solo vlogging like that. I mean in the past you've done little bits in the vlogs and that sort of thing before but to actually pick up the camera, go out there and do it, I was really proud of you Charlotte. I had so much fun filming. I got to so many activities as well which was great. Oh I love the watching the towel <laughs> fall then. I wish I could have joined in. Um, <laughs> but you know what, in this video we're going to talk about all these different experiences uh, and just our overall review and all Ultimately, was the Disney cruise worth the cost? And talking of the cost, I'm going to talk about exactly what we paid for it later in the video. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but yeah, we're just going to go through each individual process, really. I mean, going back to the first day and getting on the ship, that was really well organised with everything, wasn't it? Yeah, we didn't wait too long. It was really well organised, standing in the queue, and then we had to go and check in, and then the security process. To actually all that, to getting on board, wasn't too bad at all. Yeah, it was really efficient. I was at the desk for like a couple of minutes because we'd done all the pre checking online definitely recommend doing that so I thought that was really efficient and then yeah getting straight into our stateroom we just went for the standard interior stateroom and you know what that was brilliant I mean we'd seen some pictures and videos of it before uh, but I thought the stateroom was fantastic for us it was quite big as well wasn't it the stateroom was excellent I wasn't expecting it to be have as much space as there was and the porthole was just so sweet we really enjoyed that like the magical porthole and yes. having the carriages come up on there they're the little Disney touches that I was looking forward to seeing on this cruise and there was so many of them all the way around the ship itself um yeah, the other stateroom was great it was very spacious we had lots of room just for hanging clothes and storing under the bed uh, the lighting was good in there the tv just everything about it the sofa um it was just a really nice layout and then that goes on to the ship itself um i'd say that the ship was bigger than i was expecting it to be actually yeah i was expecting it to be a little bit smaller but a lot of the areas that were so spacious which was really nice to see the ship exceeded my expectations for the overall look and appearance of it as soon as we walked in and they said the Sambro family you know that memory will always stick with me and just seeing the grand atrium with that chandelier all the gold finishes and that kind of continued with the rest of the ship all the corridors all the carpets uh, the lift areas were all nice uh, and then of course the beautiful Walt Disney Theatre that had a nice golden touch to it as well so I do feel like um, the overall look of the ship was actually very classy now um, obviously a lot of people People associate Disney Cruise Line uh, with people that have got kids as you'll know if you've watched the channel for a while we don't have kids ourselves and there was a lot of people on there um, that didn't you know and we're still really enjoying it just like ourselves really there was a lot of adult only parties people who love Disney and want to take that on board the sea yeah and that's the thing with the ship you know it was designed um, for everyone like even just adult only groups and I thought you know the fact the ship was very classy and um, was fantastic like, a lot of people who might not have seen a Disney cruise ship before um, you know wouldn't really realize um you know that actually it's not really all for kids like it's, it's a really kind of um premium experience when you're walking around the ship and seeing all the decors now i thought that was fantastic um, now in terms of the different activities that there were on board the ship there was a lot to do i mean we did the uh, the aqueduct which was the slide um, i thought the aqueduct was okay it was a little bit slow i feel like though charlotte had come on it would have been a bit faster that ride i was like i'm not too sure if i wanted to go on it because when you were getting launched up there was a lot of water coming towards the back and I don't like when loads of water is coming over you but you probably would have gone a bit faster with me on that. I think so but uh, in terms of the pool areas they were quite nice uh, I was expecting the main pool to be a little bit bigger um, on the ship now obviously this was only our second ever cruise our other one was in September last year uh, where we did the Carnival Mardi Gras I was expecting the pool area to be a bit better um, than it was and I've got to say it was always quite busy especially yeah. that central pool in fact I only went around that area once um, but I did enjoy the smaller pool um, that was off to the side, the Mickey shaped one, uh, and that also with the uh, hot tub. I thought that was quite nice there. We, we had a nice chill in there at the end, didn't we? Oh, the hot tub was so relaxing, but I feel like it needed to be a little bit bigger because yeah. it was quite small. You couldn't really fit many people in there. Yeah, in terms of other activities there on the ship, we did the golf as well. I thought that was good. It needed a bit of TLC, um, but that was quite nice up there on the top. Uh, the gym, we 
went into there, we didn't actually get around to filming it because obviously, you know, me being ill, it kind of changed so much. But we did go and check out the gym and we went in there a couple of days. And actually the gym space was fantastic, wasn't it? The gym was really good. There was a lot of like apparatus in there that you could use. You've got your fresh water. There was a little bit of fruit in there and it was just great looking out over the ocean. That was the good thing, like looking out of the big panoramic mm -hmm. windows, like when you're on the treadmill was, was fantastic. So yeah, I thought that was nice. There was a spa there as well. We didn't use the spa because obviously that's an upcharge, but the gym, uh, the, the gym was uh, in included in all of that. Uh, in terms of other activities on the ship, uh, I think Charlotte really covered this one a lot, but there was so much going on in the daytime, wasn't there to see? There was a lot. There was a lot of quizzes. Um, I did the towel folding, which was really good. And I also liked the making your own bag. Like I thought that was really nice. There was no age limit set onto that as well. So any age on the cruise could go and do that. And there was a few adults in there as well. And I thought that was really nice, not limiting stuff to kids only and being able to include the adults as well, which was really good. Yeah, I agree. I was a bit gutted then missed out on seeing Aww. some of that myself. But obviously when I was editing the vlogs, I got to see those bits. Um, but yeah, they look really good. And that's the thing, all throughout the daytime, there's loads of activities. We went to have a look inside the kids club during the open house. Uh, then different kids clubs have also got lots of activities going on. Um, so there's always something happening on the ship, even during the daytime on them sea days. And even when the ships are docked in the ports, um, you can still stay on the ship if you want to. And there is activities ongoing, uh, like the day in Cozumel, Mexico. We came back on and there was things going on, which I think was great. But yeah, overall, um, there was so much happening. I think the main highlight of kind of activities going on, especially on a Disney cruise, is meeting those Disney characters. Lots of them to see, wasn't they, on the ship? If you love meeting Disney characters, a Disney Disney Cruise is definitely for you. I have never seen so many characters, but they do get quite long waits, we found. Yeah, I mean, walking around, you might have seen that in some of the videos, but obviously a lot of the time we're walking around and not filming too. I think the, the queues for the characters mm. were busy, bigger than in the park, to be honest. So worth bearing that in mind, you know, of course, if you're going on a Disney Cruise, you're going to want to meet the characters. Some of the queues were massive. Yeah, were. We did find, though, meeting characters later on, they were a bit quieter. Like when we went to meet uh, Minnie and Mickey near the end uh, that was at like 10 o'clock at night or something so it's well worth kind of doing them on an evening but obviously it depends on which characters are coming out at then different times but yeah I thought the amount of character meet and greets was fantastic going on throughout the ship that leads us on to then the next kind of segment I want to talk about and that's entertainment so each of the Disney cruise, the cruises out there have got different shows on uh, our ship the Disney Dream had three um, different main Broadway style shows to see now there was other bits of entertainment entertainment going on but the three Broadway shows um, all of them were really good quality and that we enjoyed but I think our favourite out of the three was definitely Beauty and the Beast wasn't it? The Beauty and the Beast stage show was beautiful the set design it was such a beautiful show we enjoyed it so much. We see a lot of Disney shows on the West End and London I've seen them on Broadway as well and of course in the Disney parks so we had pretty high standards for the shows and uh, Beauty and the Beast was definitely right up there we really enjoyed that a, a, an amazing performance. Definitely. Uh, along with that as well, uh, we really enjoyed the first show we saw on the first night, which was the Golden Mickeys, for like an award ceremony. Um, of course, we couldn't film any of these shows, but that was also a really good standard, wasn't it, that show? What was nice about that show, there was a lot of characters in there where you wouldn't normally see at the parks, which was really good. It was like a sort of a variety of loads of different characters coming together, which was really nice to see. Yeah, and the props were really good and the set design, as you'd expect from a Disney production. Uh, and then we saw a third Broadway show, which was on the last night. That was Believe, that was cool, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't a huge fan of that. There was quite a lot of characters in there, but it just didn't really do a lot for me. Yeah, I wasn't too keen on the storyline of, of that one. I know it's ran for many years and it's a bit of a classic for some people, but I thought it felt a little bit dated and myself, I'd, I'd like to see that mm -hmm. updated. But it was still a great show. Uh, the cast did a fantastic job and we really enjoyed that. Now, in terms of other entertainment going on, there was some smaller bits happening, like some live music in areas, a beautiful violinist, she was really good, uh, the pianist as well. But I did want a little bit more entertainment. I mean, of course, it was our first time cruising with Disney. We didn't really know what to expect. But when we cruised on the Carnival Mardi Gras last year, there was two large shows every night of the cruise. Whereas here, we only saw three shows. So it kind of made me want that bit more entertainment wise this time. I think it was one of those. It was on an evening, you'd go and see your stage show, you'd go and have dinner, and then you sort of wanted something else. But it was sort of 
that was it for your evening yeah. sort of thing. We missed having that secondary entertainment. I don't get me wrong, there was like a live singer on, mm -hmm. um, there was the, a, a late night DJ on till like 1am, silent discos. So there was things happening. It's not like it was, you know, have your dinner and go to bed. Um, yeah, there was plenty happening. But in terms of a large scale show, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of. Um, but saying that, we did also get a couple of theme nights. Now, I only managed to see one of oh. these, um, but the Marvel Day at Sea, which was an add-on for this cruise, it's not available on all of them. They just tell you which ones it's going to be on. I thought that was fantastic. There was Marvel characters everywhere on the ship. There was some extra theming around. And then, most importantly, the big show up on the top deck with the fireworks, the stage show, the acrobats. You had, like, Spider-Man who was climbing up the funnel. I thought that was an amazing show. That show was excellent. Like everyone was just sat down on the floor and everyone was enjoying it. And there was so much going on in that show as well. But I just feel like there could have been a little bit more of that on other nights on an evening. I know you can't do a big grand spectacle yeah. every night, but just something extra on an evening. Something you did get to see though was the pirate night. Now this is a bit of a Disney Cruise Line tradition. Sadly, this was the night where I was really poorly and um, with that food poisoning. Um, but yeah, like you really enjoyed that, didn't you? Yeah, they did like a character show with Mickey, Minnie and all the friends. That was really nice. And then they did the other show with Captain Jack Sparrow. Um, that was a really nice show. I felt like there could have been a little bit more to that because it was more of just a singing show and then you had the fireworks, but I suppose the main highlight is the fireworks in that it, one. It was quite a big display from the looks of it. I mean, you know, I was fast asleep at this point um, in bed feeling really ill, so I was gutted that I missed it. But from watching the footage back, the fireworks looked really cool because they were launched off the ship outwards but it wasn't just kind of your big fireworks we're coming in from the sides as well it looked really cool that the day. fireworks were so good but i was stood up there i was so cold it was so windy <laughs> and it was raining <laughs> <laughs> so yeah overall i thought the entertainment was very good yeah. uh, especially the beauty and the beast show and the theme nights but i just would have liked a little bit more you know a little bit more live music possibly and uh, would have been nice as well i think that's a big part of the disney parks i was expecting to see maybe a lot more like maybe just like a live a group on like a live mm -hmm. band um, like a drummer guitarist singing stuff like that whereas we didn't see anything like that um on the ship so i think that would have been nice you have got that adults only area though um which was quite good down there with the uh the nightclub area there was a few bars down there and that's where you kind of had some more um adult things on an evening there was a magician on in there i don't think it was like a big Big illusion show but there was a magician at some point we didn't get to see that there with me being ill um so yeah there was other options i just think it would have been nice to have had some bigger more grand spectacle shows as well um and then that kind of leads us into the overall um kind of cast that were on there that the crew everyone that we spoke to was really nice uh, all the entertainment team were great there was a lot of brits actually on board the ship as well and the cast members were all lovely that we interacted with weren't they they were we was having nice conversations with all the people who was from the uk there was oh where are you from which was so nice some of them really did go above and beyond which was really nice yeah i thought that was fantastic and the entertainment team you know were really good always coming around and chatting with people uh, i thought that was great and that extends to other activities we've got to mention the bingo as well that there was uh, an upcharge but that's the thing there's a few upcharges on there but ultimately all that entertainment all your characters um is all included in the cost and like i said we'll be talking about that cost later on and we think it's worth it now with disney cruise line they operate rotational dining so with the rotational down and it's all done in the app prior to your stay on the cruise so what it will be there is three restaurants and out of the three restaurants you'll visit two of them twice while on board yeah and that's because it was a five night cruise and that will differ depending on how many nights you've got on the cruise line if it was just like a three night cruise then obviously you just go to each of them once but for us it was that option uh, now with that we sat with two other couples that were lovely it I were. mean we had a really nice chat with them it was really nice I know from looking at the comments because I always read through them we reply to your comments as well so i love keeping it interactive um i did notice quite a lot of you thought oh yeah i wouldn't fancy sitting with other people um you don't have to do that you can actually request in the app if you do want to have your own table there were some other people we did see around that had their own table but i think for us we wanted that full experience of sitting with other people having them interactions and it was really nice that aspect wasn't it it was lovely we was all having a good chat but i can completely understand from some people that wouldn't want to be sat for dinner with other people so at least you do have that option to sort of have your own table yeah yeah, so we went through the uh, different restaurants and you know in terms of like a themed experience they were all really well done i mean our favorite was animator's palette from a theming point of view because crush was coming around and talking with people on the screens that interactive element there was like big paint brushes and other bits of theming around all different drawings of animations on the walls that was our favorite um but the other two were still very nice they were more kind of posh would you say mm -hmm. with the decor um but there was something you know with the dining that we were expecting and um, we thought there was actually going to be characters coming around 
a bit like character dining, you know. I was really disappointed with that because I thought we were going to have characters coming round to the table to speak to you, but nothing sort of happened. It was only Animator's Palette that you had something going on all around you. Yeah. The others really lacked something in there. Yeah, I thought maybe we'd have like the princesses, yeah. like Cinderella, Snow White, and sort of actually walking around and seeing it. Um, that's what I was kind of expecting. So on that first night, I thought, oh, you know, we were sat here now, we're having our dinner, the characters are going to come out, there's going to be even just some, some show with like lighting and audio and it wasn't it just kind of felt like a standard dinner right. experience so yeah i thought the other two that would have really enhanced it i know that on one of the other cruise lines you've got like a frozen dinner experience that looks really good with the uh, characters coming out and interacting but i just assumed that every restaurant on a mm -hmm. disney cruise was going to be like that and it wasn't it was only animators palette and um, that had that kind of interactive element and that's why it was my favorite now moving on to the food there was a lot of different options there um on the menus um they had like a, a standard basic option but then in each restaurant but then they had a more kind of um complex menu as well with lots more um on, on offer wasn't it really yeah so i think for me i found the food was sometimes it was nice the other times i just really just didn't enjoy it yeah i mean obviously something didn't agree with me on no. that cruise for me to get food poisoning i don't know what it was i'm you know i'm never going to find out now i'm just glad and i was grateful that i felt right. better um but the only food i ate was on the cruise you know even though the day i got ill was you know after we've been in Kazumo, mexico um i didn't eat anything because it was only off the cruise for a few hours um you know the only food i ate was on the cruise so it was something that gave me food poisoning who knows what um but what i did find is food was coming out and it was barely warm yeah. um you know it, it wasn't the best like some of the food and um, there was a couple of dishes that were quite nice and i did enjoy and uh, some of the chicken dishes that i tried um but I, there, there were some bits that just weren't great and the overall quality um wasn't fantastic i mean we're not really foodies ourselves anyway we wanted to go to the sit down yeah. dinner because you know it's part of the experience on a disney cruise you are there to see that theming you've paid for it and of course it was all included a three course dinner every night was included in the cost so um also our server that we had um, wasn't the best he was kind of putting people off having certain things and uh, that was a little bit off-putting as well so he wasn't the best the server in there for us so yeah in terms of the dining room experience we did find it a little bit lackluster a little bit disappointed and I know from reading a lot of reviews Disney Cruise Line isn't it really known for its food um, you know but obviously food for us isn't it normally a massive part of the experience anyway but we wanted to go we wanted to see it um, and try the restaurants but I think for me I definitely enjoyed just going to the buffet more uh, I thought thought the buffet cabanas was really good on there that was definitely a lot better than our previous cruise wasn't it the buffet was so so good there was so much choice which was fantastic so we'd scoff up in the um lunchtime so we'd be ready for the evening yeah and that was open from, from like three hours like 12 till three something like that um, so that was really good you could scoff up get loads of food <laughs> and the amount of choice there was fantastic it really was and uh, there was something for everyone there which i thought was great it had the kids section it had the adult section it had loads of desserts it had lots of salads so fresh fruits all that kind of stuff the breakfast there was a lot of choice for that as well wasn't there yeah there was so so much on the breakfast i was <laughs> struggling knowing what to have because there was so much yeah lots of fresh fruit which i like cereal um croissants all that kind lot. of stuff uh, little mini muffins i had the little mickey shaped um, oh. waffles they were really nice as well um so i was very very impressed with cabanas i thought that was fantastic likewise i was impressed with the other option so like i said just the buffet wasn't open at night because you went to your assigned restaurant but you also had an option up on the top deck um like flo's cafe from cars they did like burgers there chicken tenders fries that was open till like 11 o'clock on a night so uh, what we normally did was have like a, a snack a snack later on didn't we up there yeah so if we were still hungry after the dining we'd go up there and just get a pizza or a sandwich or something from upstairs yeah they did pizzas and stuff there as well that was good and so i was impressed with that there was also 24 hour room service included in the cost we didn't actually use it because you know we found that you know we we're having our sit down dinner and then we went out to the top we had a massive lunch we didn't use the room service which is crazy really considering it is included in the cost but i think that's a really nice service yes. loads on the menu as well that you can order up to your room um burgers chicken tenders fries you know all the usual stuff um which you can get sent to your room which i think is fantastic really and you could even order mickey ice cream bars hey yeah, we didn't do one <laughs> no. uh, but yeah along with that i just lost my appetite two days in you know i lost my appetite after that and it it put me off really like trying anything i was a bit like wary about what i ate to be honest um on the ship after that and that's the thing when you do get food poisoning it makes you like that it does. doesn't it i was it, it was a bit off putting like mm, i don't really want to try anything 
new and different now because it had put me off. But still, I'm pleased that I tried some different things. Um, but yeah, get, get me in the buffet any day. It's oh, more our sort of thing. So I, 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 and that's the, the dinner experience. I took about 90 minutes each night. Lovely chatting with everyone. But I would rather just have a quick bite to eat, 10 minutes at the buffet and go and watch another show. That's what how we normally work. Like, it? we just like getting something quick. And for us, the dining experience was great to be in there, but it just took so long. I just want to be able to grab something, yeah. eat it quick, and then go and do something else. I don't want to be confined to sit in there for so long. Yeah, I agree. And we didn't have to go to it if we didn't want no. to, but we paid for it. We wanted to see the themed experience with it being on a Disney cruise. Uh, there was also self-service ice cream available around the ship. You could just make them yourself, various different flavors. That was very good. Uh, and also soft drinks were included everywhere. So this was even in the dining room as well. If you ordered like a Pepsi or anything like that, you know, well, you know, you get a Coke and, th and that's included in the cost, which is really good. Um, then you can just go and help yourself around the ship. Uh, mainly on the upper decks where you've got like the little refill stations and water and juices that was really good wasn't it i think that was excellent to have that included because a lot of cruises you'd have to add that on as an extra package so the fact that that was included and you could have as much as you want was brilliant yeah i thought that was very good there was places to fill up the water as well all the way around the ship which was fantastic uh, in terms of alcohol we didn't actually have any no, on the cruise didn't. normally we would have a couple of cocktails but again because i was ill i didn't really want to drink after that i wanted to save myself uh, and yeah to make sure that i was going to be all right you know i thought i don't want to even try a cocktail now and make myself ill again uh but yeah it looked like there was some nice cocktails available on the ship uh, i don't think they do like an alcohol drinks package i believe it seems like you just have to buy them um as you get one them which is understandable really with it being a family cruise line uh then of course we've got the stops that we went to so as was a five night cruise we had two stops one at uh, cozumel in mexico and the other one castaway key which is disney's private island but uh the first stop cozumel uh, and didn't really have much going for it. Wasn't really that impressed with that. I was quite surprised that Disney pulled in mm. to uh, to that spot, to be honest, where there's not really anything close to the ship to have a walk around. Uh, when we did the Carnival Mardi Gras, you know, the, the three places we stopped at were all fantastic to see, and there was stuff right by the port. With this one, you definitely want to book an excursion to go away. And if we'd, if we'd have known that before, we would have done that, wouldn't we? It's really weird, because we looked at photos before, and the photos of Kazuma look completely different yeah. to what we actually saw. Um, we'd have definitely done an excursion. If we ever end up going there again in the future, we'll definitely go and do an excursion. <laughs> we would have done this time, yeah. but everything had sold out by the time that we'd got to do it. Yeah, so it was a bit disappointing, really. I mean, it the was. weather wasn't the best either. Even if we hadn't gone to a beach club, the weather wasn't great. Yeah. But yeah, I thought there was a bit more to explore. Mm. Nice to see a bit of Mexico and, you know, go out and have a bit of a walk around. But yeah, I think for me, I would have just been more than happy with a nice beach you know, yeah. chilling out for a little bit, having some food, having some drinks, um, which would have been nice. And that's the thing, you, you know, you spend a lot on these cruises. You don't always want to have to pay extra to go on an excursion. It kind of felt like with that one, you have, you have to, to to go and see something. But yeah, I, I would probably try and avoid myself booking another cruise mm -hmm. that goes there unless we had to. And if we did, we'd definitely do um, an excursion. The other destination though, Castaway Key, was amazing. We loved seeing that. Disney's private island. And I was just so pleased that I was well enough for this near the end as well. Uh, seeing that was great, wasn't it? Castaway was so nice. We got off the ship and we were just so excited. And it definitely did not disappoint. Like hiring the bike, seeing the characters. I know we didn't get the great weather in the afternoon, but we loved it so much. Yeah, we really made the most of it at Castaway, which was fantastic. But no, I thought that was really it was. nice. It was so well finished off. We hired the bikes as well. They were like, what, 50? dollars for an hour so they were pretty good and just seeing it all going in the crystal clear water and um, then you've got all the extras that you could do we would have done some more i was planning on doing the snorkeling but obviously and um, the weather had other plans for that one but castaway was great again the only negative was the food um, and i think that's the our overall kind of theme with this the most disappointing yeah. part with the cruise was definitely um the the, the sit down food and, and the buffet that we had um over on the island but other than that the buffet on the ship and the other quick service options <laughs> So um, we're all really good but yeah I thought that was fantastic after years of wanting to experience a Disney cruise, it was great to actually get on one and see the experience. And we did have a great time. And even though I was feeling poorly, we still made the best of it, didn't we? I'm just so glad that you were feeling better <laughs> towards the end of the trip. Yeah, I mean, Castaway was a bucket list destination. So I was really pleased and that was a lot better for that day. Right then, let's talk about prices. Um, so firstly, how much did we pay for this Disney cruise? Now, prices always fluctuate. It depends on when you book. I booked this about three months before and it cost 
£2,057 for the both of us to experience this. So just over £900 each really, um, plus the taxes and expenses, uh, the port charges that there are. Uh, that was the total price, £2,057 um, for the both of us. So on top of that, we did have two extra charges. So it was $140 and that was your prepaid tips. So you'd get a little envelope and it would tell you where your tips are going. So that was the tips that we paid. And then we also paid $140 $40 for internet for one device during the whole cruise. So that was the top internet package as well. There were some cheaper ones available. Um, but yeah, with that, you're paying for one device, meaning you can only use one device at a time. Um, you're not limited to that device for your whole cruise once you've signed on it. So what we could do, we could swap over our phones. I'd use it for a bit, Charlotte could use it when I was editing or wanted the internet on the laptop, uh, I could do it on there as well. So that wasn't too bad. Worth pointing out, you can just get on the Disney Navigator app mm -hmm. anyway. And there is a chat service on there, which is quite good. So you can communicate with other members of your party. You don't need to pay for the Wi-Fi to use that, do you? I thought that was really good because when I was going out and Sean was in the stateroom, I could message him while he was poorly, making sure that he was okay and not have to use the internet. So if you are on board and you've got people that you want to speak to, I thought that was really good that you didn't need internet to be able to talk to people. Yeah, and the app itself was great. Was. I mean, that was really good. It gives you all the timings for everything. It tells you what's coming up, um, which is really nice. Um, then, of course, with the tipping, yeah, you did, we did the prepaid gratuities um, and then basically you get, get like, this little slip where you can tear them off, put them in the envelope and hand them to your servers in the restaurant as well. Um, other options are available with tipping if you wanted to. You could uh, pay extra, you could pay less if you wanted, you could go and take them round to the servers. We just went round for the uh, the option that's set by Disney just there um, in regarding to the tipping on the cruise line. Overall though, do we think it was worth the cost? I mean, it was expensive. In fact, this cruise cost almost three times the amount of our cruise last year, the Carnival Mardi Gras. You're paying for the name, it is Disney. The ship was beautiful, we had some good service on there, we went to Castaway, we had a lot of meals, we had a lot of food. Do you think it was worth the cost? I'd say it was really, would you? I think it was. I think what you have to do is you do have to break it down into sections. If you was to go out for a three course dinner for five nights in a row, how much would that cost you? You're getting unlimited soft drinks, um, you're getting your buffet, you're getting to meet your characters, you're getting to go to port. You really need to do um, a breakdown, a of, breakdown it all. Yeah. of what it is and really it's, it is expensive but what you are getting included it's not too bad and for a first time doing one as well it was definitely worth the cost it was actually the cheapest Disney yeah. cruise that I could find on the website so I wanted to do one in February of this year uh, that was the cheapest one I think because we went from Fort Lauderdale instead of Canaveral which is obviously closer to Orlando and the parks uh, because we went further away and got that train down that literally saved us almost a grand because um, you know, some of the prices were were three grand upwards. Also, the fact we went for the standard interior room. At the end of the day, no matter what room you're in, you get in the full experience. You go for the same place for dinner, you see the same entertainment, you stand in the same place for the fireworks. You know, literally, you're just getting somewhere different for, for sleeping. For us, you know, I've got no interest in having a balcony. Like, maybe at some point we might do it, but, you know, I didn't need to have that because we're barely in the room. Obviously, this time, I was in the room more than I normally would be uh, with the food poisoning. But uh, that, I definitely think it was worth the cost. Now, have I come off this Disney cruise thinking I'm going to book one to go again later this year or next year? No, it's not getting me that kind of, we've done it, we've seen it, we really enjoyed it, we appreciate it getting to see it, but I've not come off with as much kind of love that I've got for the Disney parks. Like, in fact, by the end of it, uh, I was like ready to, to kind of get off and go to the parks. Yeah, that was my thoughts on it. It was lovely, it was a great experience, but it wasn't one of them that made me think that was one of the best things I've ever done. I need to go and book one again, you know. It didn't give us that draw to instantly book one straight afterwards, which we was a little bit disappointed about, but we'll definitely do one again in the future, but we're in no rush to book another one at this point. I'd like to do the Disney Wish at mm -hmm. some point. You've also got the Treasure, which is coming out later this year. We'll maybe try one of the bigger ships. I don't think we'd go smaller. Um, yeah, I think we'd go to one of the bigger ships, but I wanted a more traditional Disney Cruise Line experience first. I know the Wish and the new Treasure, they're very different to these kind of class of ship. So I wanted to do that. That traditional one it was really good on the Disney dream and uh, we did have a fantastic time and uh, you know what um, it was good fun you know seeing it and doing it was it as fun as the Carnival Mardi Gras though no it wasn't, it wasn't was it like, like, <laughs> the Carnival Mardi Gras was so so much fun we was getting involved we was doing dancing I felt like the Disney cruise was a little bit more formal and not as fun and I think you see that if you watch the both vlog series kind of back to back if you go back to September you can see that one was a lot more energetic a lot more fun 
to some people they'd be like their nightmare they'd be like no but for us it was kind of like butlins on a cruise ship and we really enjoyed that factor um, of that so two very different experiences really pleased that we did it and uh, we'll definitely do a Disney cruise at some point in the future um, but first of course we're going on our Royal Caribbean cruise which is going to be really nice in the summer for our honeymoon Yay! now we're not going to be filming this one because it is our honeymoon after the wedding I'm sure you can understand you know we want to have a, a nice time kind of you know a nice break off camera with it being our honeymoon after the wedding which is going to be a busy day um, yeah and going to be an amazing day but also we wanted to have a, a bit of a chill off camera after that so um, now Royal Caribbean my parents have done quite a lot of them I know a lot of people that have done them and say they're amazing so I feel like the Royal Caribbean could be the perfect mix a little bit of the Disney one that we enjoyed a little bit of the carnival and putting it together this looks amazing it's going to be the biggest ship we've been on as well I am so so excited everyone always says about Royal Caribbean so it'd be really nice to see it in person yeah I think if we enjoy this one a lot we'll book another one at another time of the year and then we'll film that to. one maybe you know over winter next year or something like that um, but we'll see so yeah I know a lot of you would like to see that one and I'd love to film the vlogs and share it but also it's our honeymoon we want to have a bit of time off camera with that one but we'll certainly talk about it after yeah. maybe maybe we can, when we come back we can do a little sit down video like this actually yeah. just talking about it uh, but we're not going to be filming um, on the actual I'm sure cruise you'll itself the yeah with it being our honeymoon and our wedding coming up this summer there we go as always if you've got any questions anything that we haven't covered I think we've covered everything but so. uh, comment down below as always keep it interactive we'll uh, yeah answer as many every different questions as we can do and uh, of course stay tuned for lots more content coming up got a little house update on the way next because we've had a new bed <laughs> so that's exciting um, upstairs so we'll show you that do a bit of a general update going to be doing a bit of pressure washing time to repaint the shed um, so we're going to do a bit of a general home update as well so stay tuned for that in the next couple of weeks here on the Sandbrook Adventures but of course thank you very much for watching and, and have, have your own adventures bye-bye